In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use a cheap and simple cold frame to extend your growing season. Stick around. Hey, I'm Brian with Next Level Gardening. If you're looking to join an online garden community that offers tips, tricks, and support to help take your gardening to the next level, you're in the right place. Get started now by clicking subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss anything. Now let's get growing. So what exactly is a cold frame? It's kind of like a mini greenhouse, a low box with a slanted or a clear or almost clear top that lets in sunlight, traps the heat inside, and being low to the ground, it, it heats the ground under it during the day, and then during the night, the ground actually continues to release that heat to keep the uh, inside of the cold frame just a few degrees warmer than outside. So what exactly can you grow inside of a cold frame? Cold frames aren't necessarily for growing in terms of uh, a plant's full life cycle. That's more of a greenhouse. They're really for extending your season. Now they are low to the ground, so technically you could use this as a mini greenhouse if you wanted to grow uh, low to the ground things like bush peas or um, lettuces, cool season crops that depending on your outside temperatures might just need a little protection, then you could grow those inside of a cold frame. But Today we're going to be talking about extending our season with a, gold, a cold frame. If you guys use a cold frame already, let us know in the comments what you use it for. Now you can use a cold frame to extend your season in a couple different ways. Number one, starting seeds in here like I'm doing right now. And number two, you can actually use the cold frame to help transition your, your crops that you started indoors, um, hardening them off inside the cold frame. I'll get into that a little bit later in the video. Now, I actually made this um, cold frame from scratch from actually some uh, repurposed lumber that I had laying around. If you want to see how I did that, I'll put a link to that video down below in the description. So the first thing you have to do is match the seeds you're going to be sowing with the actual temperatures outdoors at day, in the daytime, but uh, for sure at night. Now, it's easy to do that with a small thermometer that you can place inside the uh, cold frame. Before you do any kind of uh, sowing or planting or of any type, put the thermometer in there, close the lid, and what you want to find out is how much difference in temperature there is, um, how much colder it is outside the cold frame than inside. Usually the cold frame will keep the uh, inside temperature about 5 to 10 degrees warmer than the outside temperature, which isn't a lot, but it can make all the difference in extending your season. Lettuces, peas, and onions will all germinate as low as 35 degrees Fahrenheit, meaning you could actually have air temperatures outside the cold frame below freezing, 25, 30, 33, and that cold frame could bump it up just above 35 degrees, which would allow you to germinate seeds that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do. Most other cool season crops germinate at around 40 degrees. So with a cold frame, you could still germinate even when the weather is 30 to 35 degrees outside. For most warm season crops, you're going to want your temperatures to be 50 or above, uh, excluding the heat lovers, which we'll get into in a minute. But things like beans, corn, squashes, lots of herbs, um, those all want temperatures 50 or above, which means you could still start your seeds in a cold frame if the weather is above 40 which is where I am right now. So last weekend, I sowed a lot of different types of seeds. I sowed squash and pumpkins. I sowed zucchini, lots of herbs, lavender, thyme, oregano, and lots of perennial flowers to help fill up some of the new flower beds that I've got to fill up here. Now you can help raise the temperature at night just to give you that extra bit of cushion by putting a heat mat under the entire thing, which I did. Uh, there's three heat mats in here. And they're all on a timer and they come on around six o'clock at night and they go off around eight o'clock at nine o'clock in the morning. And that is just going to be that insurance policy. It's going to heat the bottom of the, um, the seeds. It's going to actually heat the ground as well, which is kind of a heat sink and it will hold heat in here. So that's going to help a lot in germination. Now in a cold frame, generally you want to turn your heat mat off once it's once it's uh, germinated. Um, however, out here, depending on the temperatures, I still may leave them on at night uh, just to 
keep the, a little bit of extra heat in here, depending on what our temperatures do. Right now, um, the last three nights, it's been in the high 30s, which is I don't think is typical for here because it's the same temperatures at my last house, and that those aren't typical March temperatures. Now, all of this does not include the heat lovers like tomatoes, peppers, um, eggplant, okra. Those all need temperatures above 60 degrees to do well, especially peppers. If you put peppers out before they're ready, before the temperatures are right, it could stunt them for life. Those needed to be started indoors, preferably on a heat mat, especially peppers. And this coming two weeks, so next week, uh, actually this, this week, today's Sunday, this week is going to be the biggest video of the year, pretty much, always on the channel, and that is starting uh, tomatoes from seed. And then the following week, we'll be starting peppers from seed. So if you're not subscribed, click that button, hit the bell so you know, you're notified when those videos come out. I'm also using my cold frame to start some bulbs like ranunculus, begonias, and caladiums. Um, they are going to benefit from this heat. I have them started in just some metal uh, the tin chafing dishes or, or catering trays, whatever you want to call them, with a bunch of holes poked in the bottom for drainage. I've also covered everything this year, seeds and the bulbs, with a layer of vermiculite. I am trying this out because I've seen a lot of great things, and um, it's supposed to keep the moisture in, which I know it will do, and cut down on damping off and fungus gnats. So I will keep you updated throughout this process, of course, to show you uh, if it's working or not. Now, like I said before, you can use a cold frame to harden off seedlings that you've grown indoors. Just put them inside, close them up, and you can actually fasten a piece of shade cloth to this roof. Leave them in here all day, as long as the temperatures are above 50, 60 for the heat lovers. And for a couple of days, just let them get used to that. Then the next day, you can keep this open for a couple of hours. Then close it for the rest of the time. The next day, maybe an hour or two more. Close it. The next day, an hour or two more. Once you have, uh, you're up to about six hours of this being open, it can be open all day, every day. Just be aware of the temperature in here when this is closed, and that's where that thermometer comes in. If you're finding that temperatures are getting above 85, 90 degrees, then you want to put something in here to be able to vent it so it can stay open, but it's still being blocked by the shade cloth on this roof. But most likely, if the temperatures are still cold at night, you want to make sure it's shut at night. Now, I did a video a while back on, on a lazier way to do hardening off, and you can still use this. Go ahead and put them in here. And when you find in your forecast that there are three consecutive overcast days, because let's face it, some of us aren't home every day, all day to be able to manage this process. Three overcast days in a row. When you leave for work in the morning, open up the lid and you can leave them in that sunlight that's being filtered by the overcast all day for three consecutive days. And at that point, they're hardened off and ready to be outside. So there really are a lot of useful ways that a cold frame comes in handy. Again, watch the video I did a week or so ago. I'll link it below to see just how easy and cheap this was to make. It really is the answer, especially if you live in a cooler season where you have to literally squeeze every last day you can out of your potential growing days. If you learned something, please give the video a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Something that really helps our channel is if you share this video on social media. Um, if you found it useful, hopefully some other people will as well. I'll see you next time.